Your name is Larry. Larry Laffer. You've arrived in beautiful lost wages without luggage. The airline lost it. Without a hotel reservation, you forgot to get one. And without a clue, you've never had one. You exit the cab. The hot, dry air of lost wages hits you in the face like a hard slap. A feeling not wholly unfamiliar to you. After your cab ride, you may be low on funds, but you've got the looks, the lines, and the leisure suit. You're in town to find true love. And if you happen to get lucky along the way, that's okay. After all, you're nearly 40. And still a bird... Still untouched by human hands. Look out, ladies. I'm finding love tonight. That's Bear, the dog. In Lost Wages, Bear is famous for getting off his leash and spreading sunshine wherever he goes. If you act in a non-threatening manner long enough, maybe he'll come over and say hi sometime. Bear's owner, Dave Oshry, lets Bear wander around on the street. It could go feral, or rabid, and it could have been circumvented. Can you please use smaller words? You bend down to reach for Bear, then you remember the old rule your mother taught you. Once you turn 60, never trust a fart. Then you also remember some piece of advice she gave you about never going near a strange dog. Yeah, poochie poochie poo. Who's a good bear? Who's a good boy? Bear doesn't seem to respond to your doggy talk. Maybe he isn't male identified. From the aroma, you recognize Bear's scent as other dog's butt number five. Well, turnabout is fair play, but try to be the bigger mongrel. Aw, oh, that's Bear, always spreading sunshine. Holy cannoli! It smells like a fire hydrant just walked in here. The one with the bottomless gut is Michael Hirschman. He's been coming to lefties for years, bending the elbow and running up a classically huge bar tab. He just paid it back, which is partly the reason lefties is open tonight. Yeah? What's up? I was just looking for women. Well, you're looking in the wrong place. It's pretty much a sausage fest here. I mean, I'm pretty, but not that pretty, if you know what I mean. I sure do. No, you don't. You like the way that feels? Natural fibers. Women love natural fibers. Of course, it also helps to have exotic looks and the right facial hair. Now, I have exotic looks and I have the right facial hair and a great opinion of yourself. Chicks love confidence. An old man in a boat told me that once. So, Michael, you know any good pickup lines? I don't need lines. I speak from the heart and my mouth. You are a renaissance man. Michael smells like Grecian formula. He probably doesn't want everyone to know that, though. You briefly, and for no apparent reason, flash Michael. He looks down at your setup. Well, that's half your problem right there. That's Jordan Lee. He's here frequently, and they say he shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. Curiously, in Florida, Arizona, and Montana, just to watch him die is a valid legal defense against homicide. Hey, loser! Wanna go get into some serious fucking trouble? Hey! No! That's a shame. I know some major going down tonight. It's gonna be awesome. That sounds boss. No, it doesn't. What are you, looking for trouble? I'm sorry. I wanted to see what would happen if I tried to do something with you. You need to get a sense of personal space. I can't afford personal space. I need all the human contact I can get. I guess people don't mess around with you. They misjudge me. For instance, just because I know 1001 ways to inflict pain on the human body doesn't mean I like to hurt people. I suddenly have to go. I get that a lot. 
Jordan smells like a lawsuit waiting to happen. Given this guy's obvious taste for drama, why are you tempting fate? The gentleman filling his face is Tom King, a regular at lefties and the kind of guy you love to have with you at the movies, so you don't have to talk to him for two hours. Looking at me? Can't blame you, actually. I got that handsome roguish look. It's a curse. But hey, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> of course I do. Yeah, I'm sure you know lots of handsome guys in my situation. Hey, play it again! You've got a loose thread. Hey. Hands off. I mean, I love it when anyone touches me, but not you. You've really got the boyish devil may care thing down, Tom. I'm jealous. Well, it can't be learned. Tom smells like cologne. Way, way too much cologne. You stop before committing yourself to the act, as you have a feeling you'd end up on the losing end of the comparison. This international bon vivant, Francois de Keat, is one of Lefty's big investors. And being from Europe, he's extremely cool. Wow! You're cool! I know, right? It's almost too cool how cool I am, n'est-ce pas? Ooh! And you speak Klingon, too! No, I don't think so. <sighs> I resent your chiseled features, your height, and your easy-going, laid-back demeanor. Can I have your life? No, I have too much cool to fit into that little body. Yes? Just hoping some of your cool would rub off on me. <laughs> Get in line. Not a lot of ladies around here. I know where we can find some sheep. I'm not there yet. You take a deep whiff. What is that aroma you're wearing? It's so familiar. It's my new body spray, Axe Hole. You drop trow and display yourself to poor Francois. Whoa, please, cover up. Are you blown away by my massive manhood? Not at all. The glare is hurting my eyes. You are in a dimly lit hallway. The peeling wallpaper gives the roaches something to watch. Clutter fills the room and a filthy drunk wearing filthy clothes sits on the filthy floor, leaning his filthy back against the filthy wall. He is a poor little lamb who has lost his way, and also his bladder control. Hey, don't touch your merchandise. I'm not your cabin boy anymore. He must have an interesting past. Wanting to be humane to the drunk, you clap him firmly on the shoulder, stroke his head, pat his hand, and get up close to him. So tell me, how are you doing? Ah, oh, thanks for asking, buddy. I'd be just great if only my impetigo would clear up. <laughs> Once more, you get close, but not too close to the drunk. Have you thought about going to a doctor? Nah, you go to a doctor, and they just want to make you better. Then you get sick again, and you start this cycle of destruction. No thank you. Can I do anything for you? A little drink would be nice. To break up the monotony of my constant imbibing, sometimes my old ex-captain, Roddy Kentiki, drops by and shares a fine beverage. A fine beverage. A little drinky drink with me. You reel back at the putrid stench of the offensive bum who can probably hear every word we're saying about him. You proudly display your member to the trunk. Is that your wiener? Yep. Wow. I've never seen an innie before. Apples, apples, apples for sale. Get your fresh apples here, only one dollar. You know, most guys look kind of shapeless and dumpy in a barrel, but this guy really carries it off. Apple, just a buck. I'll call you. 
Hey, you'll get your turn in here soon enough. Hey, mister! I presume it's mister. I can't see under your barrel. The name's Tim. Tim Tibbets. And you are... Larry? <laughs> Larry Laffer? What's your question, Larry? Well, um, I see you're wearing a barrel, and I figure this can only mean one thing. <laughs> you're going to go over Niagara Falls. Interesting. Furthermore, since Lost Wages is near the West Coast, and Niagara Falls is near the East Coast, and you're already in the barrel, you must be super wealthy. They'll never let you on a commercial airline addressed that way. Your mind works in strange and mysterious ways, Larry. Actually, I'm broke. That's why I'm dressed this way. Wanna buy an apple? Let me think about it. It would be kinda cool to buy an apple from a really rich guy. You sniff the barrel guy carefully, swishing his aroma around in your mouth before spitting it out. Right. <laughs> Piquant and musty, eh? with a flabby finish, and I believe you're starting to oxidize. Yes, but I'm also smooth and rounded. So I see. You have this barrel confused with your neighbor's rain barrel back at home. That's the one that gets your special additive. Here's a buck. I'll take an apple. Thank you, sir. Here you go. Um, ew. You look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. Hmm. Now feast Walster. Ow! I bruised my uvula. The Walk of East... Nafis's policy is never to be caught dead speaking to losers. But unlike Nafis, that policy isn't set in stone. You kiss Nafis Dwalster's star on the Walk of Shame. There's a disturbance in the force. Somewhere, Nafis is blushing. Nafis doesn't want to see that. Nobody wants to see that. Nafis stops by every day to sweep and polish his star. Please don't make a mess. If I wait long enough, can I meet him? No, he never comes when you're around. That's what she said. You look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. David Ramirez. Thank God, a name I can pronounce without hurting myself. The Walk of East... David's not speaking to you. Ever since that time at Club Med with the grapefruit and the Pekingese. You surreptitiously lick David Ramirez's star on the Walk of Shame. Hmm. Tastes a little like Blintz's and a little like Paella. Don't do it, Larry. David Ramirez can probably beat the crap out of you. Don't leave stuff on David's star. He's always trying to declutter. You look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. Skylar Kaufman. Skylar. That's an interesting name. I bet it's going to be real popular someday. You shudder involuntarily. Skylar star is an inanimate object and will not speak to you. But at night, when you're asleep, all the Walk of Shame stars get together and make fun of you. This is for you, Skylar Kaufman. I love ya. You plant one right on him. Skylar jumps back from his monitor, drops the mouse, and wipes his lips off in disgust. You start to unzip and then decide you'd better not pee on Skylar's star. You never know when you might want to hit him up for cash again. Don't leave anything on Skylar's star. Some other computer game character might come along and take it. They take everything that isn't nailed down. You look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. Jeff Schreiner. I wonder if he wears a fez. That's great, Larry. That's probably the first time he's heard that joke today. Jeff Star does not speak. It just lies there as a testament to Jeff's place in the heavens and his stellar ego. I couldn't have done it without you, Jeff. You plant a wet one right on Jeff's Shriner. Somewhere on the breeze, you can hear Jeff gently retching in disgust. You stand over Jeff's star and extricate yourself from your fly. From somewhere far away, you hear a scream as Jeff suddenly develops acute hysterical blindness. At long last, Larry, have you no sense of decency? Nothing comes between Jeff and his walk of shame star. 
taxi! Hey Mac, where are you headed? Seventeen bucks, pal. Thanks, kid. You look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. Leroy Pop Pop Kelly. How can you not love somebody with the nickname Pop Pop? Besides, it's kind of a waste of money, isn't it? The guy says, see, I bought this star in honor of my grandfather, Leroy Pop Pop Kelly. And his friends will say, how do we know? It could be named after any of the other four million Leroy Pop Pop Kellys. So Leroy, I'm interested in how you came to be known as Pop Pop. I mean, it could be simply a term of endearment, like Pops, or with a last name like Kelly. Pop Pop could refer to your fists in a fight. Pop Pop, like that. Larry, please avoid culturally stereotyping the Kickstarter patrons. They're the only friends you've got. You lick Leroy Pop Pop Kelly's star to see what it tastes like. That's not why I'm doing it. I'm just trying to let him know he's alpha. He's obviously Irish, Larry. Be nice. Or else. That doesn't interest Pop Pop. But do you have any single malt scotch? No. Then oh well. That was just a guess, but it's a good guess. You look at the name on the Walk of Shame star. Darren Takaki. Hey, I've been accused of being Takaki for my own good. Hiya, Darren. I'm not sure where to start with your name. I mean, you've got the Darren, which is almost unheard of outside of a certain TV show about a witch. And you've got the Takaki, which is also full of possibilities for dirty double entendres. I don't know how your friends decide each morning how they're going to make fun of you each day. You give Darren's Walk of Shame star a hearty whiff. This has a delicious fusion cuisine aroma. It's like a mixture of sushi and fresh clipped suburban lawn. You pee all over Darren's star. Well, I figure it this way. Takaki means tall tree in Japanese. So, I'm really just helping him fulfill his destiny. Please, Darren likes to keep his star absolutely pristine. Is that some sort of Zen Buddhist ancient secret of calm kind of thing? No, it's an annoying Darren Takaki is seriously anal retentive kind of thing. You read the name off the Walk of Shame star. Richard E. Cleary Jr. There's a guy who really knows how to impress his friends with the amazing things he's bought. Now, if he could only figure out how to buy some friends. Hey there, Richard. It's me, Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer, how's all the ostentatious spending going? Cause from our point of view, it's going great! You kneel down and give Richard E. Cleary Jr.'s Walk of Shame star a lick. Hmm. Overtones of foie gras, truffles, caviar, all the foods that a wealthy Kickstarter contributor, especially one named Rich, probably eats every day. You pee freely on Richard E. Cleary Jr.'s star. I'm sticking it to the man. Nothing personal, Rich. I can call you Rich, can I? Don't leave your junk sitting around on this star. Richard E. Cleary Jr. paid a lot for it. He probably had to do without champagne and toast points for at least a day to afford it. With the thought that so many... In you look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. Greg Wilson. I wonder what that extra G is for. Gas? Gravity? Grams? General audiences? Oh, wait! I know! Grandiose! So, Greg, if I can play amateur psychologist for a moment, I'm sensing you added this G to differentiate yourself from the pack. Stand out from the rest? Some people might call it a transparent ploy to call attention to yourself, but we know better, don't we? It's really a desperate cry for help. You give Greg Starr a big wet lick. Hmm. Most of the star tastes great, but the Greg seems to have no taste whatsoever. And so, extrapolating from that, never mind, we'll err on the side of civility. You unzip and let loose all over Greg's Walk of Shame star. Then you zip up and... Wait, I'm not done! Somehow you manage to do it again. There. Now he's got an extra P to go with his extra G. 
Judging by the way he's hoarding extra letters, maybe Greg needs less junk in his life. Carefully studying the dim outline of a now missing star on the Walk of Shame, you realize, like you, it leaves a faint impression. I bet you were once a respected star. Like Sly! No, that's just where some Kickstarter contributor reneged. What was his name? Mustafa Coombs. You quickly fall prone on the pavement and carefully lick the perimeter of the star's impression. Yeah, that's depressing. Why do you think they call it the Walk of Shame? You've dreamt of making love to a star, and this is as close as you're going to get. Check out the other stars instead. Their owners helped make this game. You look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. Tim Seaholm. Hey, that's a Swedish name. I think it means he who sits alone at parties. So, uh, Tim, I don't know you, but it's nice to know I'm not the only total loser out there. This star tastes like mustard and curdled half and half. If he's like me, that's the total contents of his refrigerator. I'm tempted to pee on Tim's Walk of Shame star, but I won't, just out of professional courtesy. Allowing you to put that on Tim's Walk of Shame star might suggest that he's special in some way. That's so not true. You look at the name on the Walk of Shame star. Gary Gann. Huh, what kind of crazy parent purposely gives his kid an alliterative name? So your folks name you Gary Gann, huh? I guess shrinks never have to ask you why you hate your parents. I mean, it's gotta be pretty obvious. You give Gary Star a lick. Hmm, it tastes like bitterness and bile, but yummy. I would never pee on your walk of shame, Star Gary. Clearly, your life must be tough enough. Golly, giving goodies to Gary Gann, get a grip. You read the name off the Walk of Shame star. Chris Chino Sahara Yim. Chino Sahara? What the hell is that about? I already love this guy. In fact, I love anybody with enough disposable income to buy one of these stars. Why, somebody that wealthy could buy me a new Vespa if they wanted, without even thinking about it. That was super subtle, Larry. My man, Chris. How's about spreading a little of that love around? Can't really get the girls without a Vespa, can I? I'm sure you know that, being so rich and popular. You probably already have a fleet of them. You give Chris Chino Sahara Yim star a healthy slurp. Hmm, tastes like money. Then you polish up the moistened star with the back of your sleeve. There you go, Chris, or Chino Sahara, or whatever you call yourself. Shiny as new. If I can do anything else for you, you'll be sure to let me know, okay, Chris? Vespa. What? Pee on a walk of shame star as important as Chris Yen's? I would never. How could you even think such a thing? Vespa. Now, now, let's not go around cluttering up big important Chris. Excuse me, that's Chino Sahara to you, Yim's Walk of Shame star. Vespa. You look down at the Walk of Shame star and read the name. It just says Int. What the hell is Int? We don't know, but he paid for his Walk of Shame star, so the Lost Wages Chamber of Commerce gave it to him. How do you know it's a him? Look out there. You see any women with the rotten taste to play this game? Since you don't even really have a name, I can say anything about you I want, can I? Kinda takes all the fun out of being mean. You kneel on the ground and sniff Int's Walk of Shame star. Oh, it smells like sweat, unwound hair, and butt. Oh, whoops, <laughs> I was sniffing my right hand. You relieve yourself on Int's Walk of Shame star but your heart isn't in it. That's good, because last year I accidentally peed out some of my right ventricle. Let's not sully Int Star. Just because we don't know who he is doesn't mean he won't come after us. Please call your dentist and tell him he's not doing enough.
Now that's a fancy elevator. It looks sleek and brand new. You take the piece of paper. Hey, bud, where are we going? I'm gonna need, uh, 24 bucks, bud. Thanks, kid. You wouldn't happen to be fixed for wine, would you? Nope. All right. Be that way. You give the bum the once-over. You poor guy. I know what it means to have no dignity at all. Yeah, you kind of radiate that. Quit tickling me. Do you need any help? Well, yeah. My name's Roddy Contiki. You don't need help. That's a great thing! Anyway, I'm in a 12-step program. I try never to be more than 12 steps from a liquor store. Like that? I made that up. Anyway, nobody will sell me anything anymore, if you know what I mean. So if you happen to come across any semi-fine fermented beverages, I'd reward any generosity you'd care to show. Okay. I'll remember that, Mr. Contiki. You will? Huh. I didn't give you enough credit. Considering you're clearly homeless, you smell pretty neutral. Yeah, the birds and snails keep me picked pretty clean. What is that? Your appendix? The bouncer takes the pass and scrutinizes it as closely as his overhanging brow will let him. Hmm. You're Rabbi Cornswig? Um, of course. Okay. Welcome to Club 69. Thank you. Shalom. Right this way. The music in here is loud enough to kill the herpes. The crowd in back is an impenetrable mass of throbbing humanity, but the vibe up front is casual and inviting. Is it just you, or is there a guy in that cage trying to escape? You can't help him. The crowd would overwhelm you. What are you doing? My name is Jack Oske. If I don't get out alive, Tell my family I love them! You try to smell the guy in the go-go cage. There's definitely an air of desperation, but that could be coming off of you. You flash the poor Kickstarter contributor in the cage. Now that's just cruel! Enjoy your evening, sir or madam. He's overcome with sorrow at your departure. He's not saying it in words so much, but you can really tell from his expression. You read the name off the Walk of Shame star. Michael Hoffman. There's another guy with too much time and money on his hands. He's probably playing the game right now. With one hand. Isn't that weird how I know that, Michael? This game must be hooked up to your webcam or something. If you don't believe me, come back sometime when you're not playing the game and see what I say. I like you, Michael. Michael does have a sense of humor. Are you telling the IRS about this Kickstarter contribution? Don't go there. You lick Michael's star. It shudders slightly. It's slightly salty and a little bitter. That's Michael. Next time I come for lost wages, I'm bringing mouthwash. You have a feeling Michael would draw the line at that. 
That would defeat the purpose of the star, Larry. Michael specifically got it so that strangers could walk by and see his name. Isn't that a little... Tell me about it. You look down at the Walk of Shame star and read the name. Brian Connors. What a great stage name. You've got Brian, a solid sounding name. Sounds like a handsome guy with a big sharp jaw. Then you've got Connors, clean cut, all American, a man of ideas, a man of action, a man of integrity. Actually, he's the total opposite. Brian, I think I'd have better luck with women if I had your name. You sound like the hero in an Aaron Spelling crime drama. If you're interested in swapping, let me know. I mean, it's probably not like you're using your name for much good right now anyway. Unwilling to go the distance, you merely sniff Brian's star. Ooh, it smells like English leather. Good for you, Brian. I didn't know anyone still wore that. You rinse off Brian's star. It was dirty. I was only trying to help. You put that on Brian's star. Instantly, the star sinks into the ground and opens up a hidden passageway. It leads to a hidden bunker where you meet the real Brian Connor action hero. He takes you on a journey of intrigue across the globe, in which danger and romance entwine and justice triumphs. Brian leaves you back in lost wages some weeks later. You're exhausted, but infinitely wiser. Thanks, Brian. That was a great adventure, except for the hidden object screens. You look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. Renee Abbach. I'm going to assume that's a woman's name. Because if I was a man named Rene, the last thing I do is publicize it. Oh, and look! She's put her footprints in the cement next to the star! You put your feet inside of Rene's footprints. Holy cow! They make feet that big? Oh, and look! She's put her boob prints in the cement too! You put your hands on Rene's boob prints to judge their size. Oh, I see. I noticed that too. I'm sure she's a very nice person. So, Rene. I guess you won't have to worry about backaches when you're older. I bet you have nice, wide, childbearing hips, too. Good thing Renee isn't here to listen to this, Larry. She'd either kick you to death or smother you with her... Well, it'd have to be with her hands now, wouldn't it? You give Renee's star a healthy lick. Hmm, a little pungent and coppery. That's because a pungent little cop was standing there before. You imagine Renee and try to pleasure yourself, but it just ain't happening. Maybe if I had a foot fetish. You have no reason to leave things sitting around on Renee's star, but it's nice to know that there's enough room in those footprints for your entire inventory. You look down at the Walk of Shame star and read the name. Vince Valenti. Uh-oh. Larry, do you like racially profiling people based on nothing but their name? No, no, I don't. But it sure beats getting to know them. Uh, Vince, I want you to know that I acknowledge that you did me a favor by buying the star. And now I totally owe you a favor. So, anything you want, just ask me. But I can't kill anybody. I can't make anybody fall in love with anybody else. I can't bring people back from the dead. And ixnay on the wishing for more wishes. You lick Vince's star, which not only tells you how it tastes, it also shows you know how to grovel. As if there was any doubt. I like it. It tastes like the old country. Vince is gonna hear about that, and he's gonna be very disappointed in you. I'll live in fear. Can't that be punishment enough already? You make an offering to the Valenti. This is a gift from me to you on the occasion of your gameplay. He doesn't seem to want it. If he did, he'd take it. Welcome to the come and go. Please keep your hands where I can see them. Let us be discreet about this. I understand you are interested in our birth control devices. Yes, I'd like one of your finest prophylaxatives. We have all manner of lovers for your stooping pleasure. What sort of lover are you preferring? What length would you like? What girth are you requiring? What texture would you like? 
What full finish would you like? What excess capacity do you require? What sort of lubrication would you like? What sort of scent would you like? Certainly, sir. There you go. Thank you. Hey, everybody! This perv just bought a aluminum foil, Vienna sausage, California redwood girth, Sharpe, semi-gloss, old faithful capacity, extra picante, chicken Vesuvio scented lubber. What a perfect! Thank you. Now please leave. There is no loitering. You look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. Martin Van Zwienen? Hey! Wait a minute! Van Zwienen? Isn't that Dutch for resulting from an unholy experiment? There is no point in trying to talk to Martin, as his friends and family will all tell you. So, Martin Van Zwienen, if that is your real name, I must say, you have the deep, rich aroma of melting chocolate, fresh mountain air, and, hmm, just a hint of frightened sheep. Don't pee on Martin Star. He's having a bad day. You can tell because it's one of those days that ends with why. If you leave that covering his walk of shame, Star, Martin will just zip over here and pick it up and take it. It's not like he's got anything better to do. You look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. Serena Nelson. Serena Nelson? I had the worst crush on a Serena Nelson in school. She used to eat paste, and she'd eat bugs if you dared her. I remember thinking, Serena is the most wickedly awesome woman in this whole adult ed class. Serena, Serena, whatever happened to you? You stole my heart, then you ground it into a fine red paste. As soon as I professed my love for you, you disappeared. Will I ever see you again? From somewhere in the distance, a female voice cries out, Not unless someone blows my cover. Serena Nelson's star has an overpowering aroma of vinegar, apricot, and avocado. She always did use too much feminine wash. Unloading onto Serena's star in retaliation for her rejection of you many years ago would be the act of an immature, ill-mannered loser. <sighs> You'll be damned if you're going to leave a gift for that wanton harlot. And you are wanton a harlot. You read the name off the Walk of Shame star. Britton Matthews. Britton. I don't know who you are, but I'm betting there's a good reason they've stuck you behind this light pole, where you're hard to see. So Britain, with a name like that, I'm guessing you are British. That explains why they stuck you back here. I don't think they like foreigners in this town. I haven't seen a single one. You give Britain's Walk of Shame star a lick. Oh my, that's bitter and sour. That's Britain Matthews for you. You unzip and let loose all over Britain's star. I'm sure it's not a big deal to him. After all, I'm only doing to him what life has been doing to him ever since he was born. See, if you leave that sitting there, Britain will probably come by and take it. Then he'll try to hawk it for drug money. <laughs> That's my Britain. You look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. Aaron Odin Jensen. What an awesome name! It evokes such ancient strength and majesty. You know, like Abe Vigoda or Beelzebub. You struggle to make small talk with someone whose name has an Odin in it. So, um, how's that giant skull of yours? That is never a good line to open with. Ah! It tastes like Ludafisk! On the very slim chance that this guy is really the ruler of Asgard, Urinating on his star might be punishable by lightning bolt or something. You don't need to leave an offering to the Norse god. 
But these days, just the thought is enough to guarantee you a high quality afterlife in Helga Fjell. You look at the Walk of Shame star set into the sidewalk. Jeroen Deckers. Wait a minute. That's another Dutch name, isn't it? What the hell? I hope I'm not in one of those rough Dutch neighborhoods. So, I hear that your country, Dutch Wonderland, is like a woman's prison or something. Guarded by dykes, right? That is all kinds of wrong. Unsurprisingly, Jeroen's star smells like cheap wooden shoes. Rule number four, never take off anybody named Jeroen. He's probably really tight with Ragnarok or someone. All Jeroen wants is a name that people can pronounce without bruising their epiglottis. Got one of those? No? I didn't think so.